Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I set up my 2020 bullet journal spreads. This is kind of a continuation from my last video where I flipped through my 2019 spreads. So before we get into it I just want to say that this video might be a little different from other people's setups just because I started my bullet journal in September. So I won't be showing you how I set up my goals page or my year in pixel spread or anything like that. But later in the video I will be setting up a weight loss tracker and my semester 2 timetable so you at least get to see how I go about setting up pages like that. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this video and find it somewhat useful if not just entertaining. <laughs> okay, so before we get into the actual bullet journal I thought it could be quite useful to show you what supplies I use and what the basics are that you would need. Also, my hands are not linked with my voice, so if they look a little bit off, that's why. So first thing that you'll need is a bullet journal. Most people tend to use a notebook with dotted pages, and I do love a good dotted notebook, but honestly you could get by with any kind of paper. A book is ideal, but if you can't afford one then you could definitely get by by just folding up some printer paper and using that. I'm using a book that I bought from a store called Kenji. Unfortunately they don't have an online store, but to be honest it is kind of falling apart so it might not be worth it anyway. Next thing that you will need is a ruler. I think I referred to this as my holy ruler at some point and I completely stand by it. I always see people online drawing perfectly straight lines with no guidance and as much as I wish I was that skilled, I'm just not. Every time I try to be like them, I've ended up wrecking a page in my notebook and it's just not worth it. So unless you are one of these gods among men, I would definitely recommend you use a ruler. <laughs> The next thing I always use is a mechanical pencil. It doesn't have to be a mechanical one, but I think it makes everything so much easier to plan out a page with pencil before you're going with pen. Oh, I think I'm trying to show you my plan. So yeah, before I ever even touched my bullet journal, I actually planned out all of the pages inside of my sketchbook. I also swatch all the colours I'm considering before I commit as well. I would definitely recommend planning your pages first, just so you're not going in completely blind. I always go in with pencil first, so I really need to have a rubber on hand, but despite that, mistakes always end up being made, so it's nice to have a trusty rubber ready to correct them. It can't rub out your anxiety, but it can certainly try. <laughs> okay, so next I always use my fine liners. I have always used Pigma Microns, so I like to use them. The sizes I use the most are 0 0.5 and 0 0.8. I also recommend 0 0.3, just because it's the ultimate fine liner size. I'm not really sure why I think that, but at some point that got ingrained into my brain. Obviously any fine liners will do the trick, but if you're planning on adding colour to your journal I would definitely make sure that the pens don't smudge. So this is my favourite ink pen. I want to call it a fine liner but I don't think that's right. It's just nice to write smaller titles though and it looks a lot better than a ballpoint pen. Which actually brings me to my ballpoint pen. So when I'm actually writing in my bullet journal I always use a ballpoint pen, they're just convenient and you don't have to make it look perfect all the time, and a ballpoint pen will never let you down, unless it runs out, which most of them do, immediately. <laughs> okay, so if you do want to add colour to your journal I would highly recommend these Crayola Super Tips. Not only do they work for colouring and highlighting, they're also pretty good for calligraphy as well. They're super cheap and you get loads of different colours and they just work really well. If you don't want to buy new pens, you could definitely just use highlighters, coloured pencils, just anything really. But be careful with markers, especially alcohol ones, because the paper is super thin and I'd be surprised if it could even survive a marker. <laughs> I would also recommend a... I want to say scalpel, but that doesn't sound right. I think people call them exacto knives, maybe blades, but it's basically a scalpel. So this isn't necessary at all, but I like to keep it around in case I mess up a page so badly that I just need to get it out of my journal. And finally, another unnecessary but useful product to keep around is a white gel pen. Now I usually go for the white Posca pen just because it's a bit more reliable than the white gel pens that I have. These can be useful for covering up mistakes, especially when you try to make a straight line without a ruler. <laughs> they do work better when your paper is completely white, but you can kind of get away with it even if it isn't. Also, it's a good way to make it look like you've put more effort in than you actually have. So if you just colour in an area black or in a dark colour and then write your titles with a white pen, it just adds a little bit of something without max effort being used. Okay, so that's basically everything I used, but I just want to make a quick point that a bullet journal is meant for you, and it should be your own planner or creative outlet or whatever you're using it for, so 
Don't worry too much about buying the most expensive supplies. As long as the things that you do have work for you, it really doesn't matter. Honestly, the bare minimum would be a ruler, a ballpoint pen and a piece of paper and you'd get by just fine. So yeah, just have fun with it and don't worry too much about your supplies. Okay, so let's finally get into this. So first thing that I did off camera was just go in with pencil on all of my spreads just so that they're ready. And now I just want to let you know that the first thing that you're going to see is actually disgusting. This title just ended up looking absolutely horrendous. I ended up winging it and it just went so wrong. Like the calligraphy just looks terrible and wonky and weird and then I did this little drawing of a camera. Yes, it is supposed to be a camera. And I did actually ask Connor if he could tell what it was at the time and he said it looks like a floppy chainsaw. So yeah, that's how my day was going. So I quickly gave up on that and then moved on to my January page. I tried this new kind of title page in the spirit of New Year, New Me, where I used a circle instead of a rectangle. I know that's super creative. <laughs> But yeah, I just sort of changed it a bit because normally I do this weird letter thing. I'll probably put a picture of it because I don't know how to describe it, but I think this looks a lot better. So after that, I went around it with little drawings of rats, strawberries and cheese. So the main reason I decided to draw rats was because it's now the year of the rat. But another reason is that rats are just adorable. And I drew cheese and strawberries purely because we watched Ratatouille the other day, which is basically just the film of my childhood. Like the scene where they're eating cheese and strawberries just speaks to me for some reason and it always makes me want to eat cheese and grapes. I mean, it's probably because every time we watched it I used to get cheese and grapes and like go up to my room and eat them, but you know, those were the good old days. <laughs> then I started colouring it in with my trusty Crayola pens and I did try some shading on the strawberries at first but it honestly looked pretty bad so I decided to stick with flat colours. I wanted the rats to look cute and not just like one colour, so I just used some light browns and left quite a lot of it white. I did actually have to look up what rats look like, just because I kind of forgot what they actually look like. Despite that though, they came out so cute and they honestly make me want to cry. Anyway, changing the subject. Considering I'm not usually the biggest fan of yellow, this page ended up pretty yellow. I think it's just because I made the circle in the middle completely yellow by the end. So you could actually think hey, is that the sun? But you'd be wrong because it's a big moon cheese. <laughs> it's a big moon made of cheese. So anyway, after that I just took my white Posca pen and added some seeds onto the strawberries. You know, so they actually look like strawberries instead of just pink blobs. So the next thing I did was my monthly spread and this is just where I keep track of everything that's going on through the month but honestly it's just not that interesting. Like I've seen a lot of other people doing more artsy or collagey spreads but I just like to keep mine simple because it's easier. <laughs> Plus later on when I'm actually filling it out it's a lot less pressure because I'm a lot less scared of ruining it since I don't care about it that much. Besides you can't go wrong with a good rectangle you know. So this month I decided to do a new thing which is where I'll be writing down all the videos that I have planned for the next month and it was really supposed to hold me to making a new video every week but it's clearly not worked since this video is a week late but hey maybe it'll work next month. I guess we can only hope. At this point I don't even know if anybody will care about a 2020 setup just because it's basically the end of January now. But I just need to get this video out of the way so I can just forget about it and move on with my life. Anyway, I also like to keep track of my followers on this page so that I can see the growth of my accounts. But yeah, if followers or numbers or whatever is something that stresses you out, I definitely wouldn't recommend doing this just because actually writing it down and seeing it would probably piss you off. You know what? This is actually a pretty convenient time to tell you to go and follow me on Instagram and to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Or don't, you know, it's whatever. <laughs> but I'll be super hurt if you don't. <laughs> anyway, I decided to use peach and lavender together as my colour scheme because I thought they looked kind of funky together and I really like it. So the next thing I had to do was my weekly spreads and the only thing I did differently here was add a habit tracker. Again, these are pretty boring and I actually messed up the first one which was completely tragic. But yeah, fun fact, I don't do my spreads Monday to Sunday I just like to have four weekly spreads per month, 
To be honest, it makes me feel like I'm saving paper and I just like it better, okay? Next thing you know, I'll be drinking three week old bath water just so I feel like I'm saving water and money. <laughs> I've also been binging a lot of bullet journal videos at the moment and I've noticed that everybody seems to do borders around everything and honestly i think it makes everything look better so yeah there's a life hack for you always add borders so that your pages look slightly professional <laughs> yeah i think you get the idea since this is just me making rectangles over and over again so i'm gonna move on to the next spread that i did which was my semester two plan so this is just where i keep track of all the work that i need to do and then when it needs to be done for so if you're at uni or school or if you have work to do for your job then I would definitely recommend a page like this since it does actually help me keep on top of the work I have to do and it has worked so far so yeah I would recommend. <laughs> Okay, so now we're finally going to deal with this atrocity. So the only way I could think to deal with it was to just start again with a new piece of paper. So I just cut out a piece that would cover it and hide my shame. And then I wrote out the exact same title, but I actually planned it out first this time. I also decided to use my Crayolas just to make it a bit more colourful and I ended up doing a gradient because I'm fancy. I'm still not entirely happy with this title, but after what was underneath it, I think we can let it slide. But anyway, I made this page because I wanted to print out a load of pictures from last year that had my friends and family in them. By the way, all of my pictures from the first three quarters of the year got deleted, so I did have a limited amount to choose from. So if you think you weren't featured enough, I'm sorry. At my dad. <laughs> anyway, it did actually end up being a really cute page and it makes me happy, so I'm glad I pushed through the mess and actually made it. <laughs> This next page was pretty simple since it is just my university timetable. So I just started with a little gradient title, you know, being fancy again, and then I just drew up a table. So as you can imagine, it's just the days of the week and then the times of the day. But because my timetable does change every week, I decided to mark my lectures and stuff with post-it notes. And honestly, cutting these bad boys up was so satisfying and I had such a great time. Except for when it inevitably went wrong every now and then, but that's not the point. Fun but not really interesting fact number two is that I got these post-it notes from the freebie fair, so that's pretty solid. <laughs> Whether this page will actually be practical for me, I have no idea. Just because I don't know if I'll have the motivation to peel them all off and do it again every week. Either way, I just finished up this page by making a key so that I know which colour means what type of class. So yeah, that's my little timetable. So the last spread that I did was my weight loss tracker since one of my aspirations for this year is to lose weight. I'm not going to fill it out during the video since I'd rather die than put that on the internet. But yeah, I started off by doing a board game styled line. I don't really know how to explain it but you can see it so you'll probably get what I mean. I saw a lot of people doing trackers like this where you colour in a square every time you lose a pound or something like that. So yeah, it wasn't my original idea. I also decided to do a you are here sign at the time and honestly I kind of hate it. And then underneath that I just did another tracker where I can write down my exact weight at the end of every week. And then I just finished it up by adding some pink and some grey borders around it. And then, guys, I had this fabulous idea. I'm not gonna lie, this is the best idea I've ever had. <laughs> so I thought if it was a real board game, you would have a little character to represent you. So I decided to make a little snail that would move along as I lost weight. And I just love him so much. I used my pro markers, and again, do not use them in your bullet journal because they will probably just disintegrate the paper. I just use my pro markers to colour in the little guy and then I use my X-Acto blade to cut him out and then the worst thing ever happened. I mutilated him, his fucking eye came off and I was devastated but I mean after I finished mourning his eye I stuck him onto a piece of paper and recut him out so that you know he was whole again. So yeah this is the little guy. Isn't he just the sweetest thing you've ever seen? I just hope you appreciate him as much as I do. I made a, you a little stop motion thing, I don't know why, but I'm sure you love it. Then I just put some blue tack on the back of him and stuck him in my bullet journal. And honestly, this is the best thing I've ever made in my life. So yeah, that has been my 2020 bullet journal setup. I hope you enjoyed this video.
is it really bad that I'm glad that it's over? I don't know, but yeah, I will see you in the next video. Okay, so before we get into the actual bullet journal, I thought it could be quite useful to show you what I actually use to book you. Testing the audio. Audio. Testing it. Audio. Audio. The kind of title page where I used a circle instead of a rack a rectangle. <laughs> hey, I'm testing the audio. I know that's super in in innovative. In innovative. Creative. Audio test, please don't let me down and be working, please. And then when it needs to be. Please, 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 please work, please work. This wasn't a. This wasn't my original idea since I saw. Audio, art thou audio, audio, art thou audio, audio, audio. This wasn't actually my idea, and I. Well, I just think, I think they, they came, came out so cute. Like, like honestly, honestly looking at them actually look like. Well, I just think, I think, think they, they came, came out so cute. Like, like honestly, honestly looking at them just makes me feel a bit happy.